Good morning, everybody. It's great to see you. Um, with this being Palm Sunday, now that you're nice and comfortable in your seats, we're going to have you uh, get up, those who would like, to get up and join us back at the table with the palms. We're not going to go outside, so you can leave your jackets or whatever, but then uh, we'll bless the palms, and then we'll have a, a slight procession, um, as we say, bring, make sure you bring your bulletin, and also the green sheet, and as we say so, uh, the psalm, we'll be walking around here, and then enter in from this side, and then you can return to your seats from there as we uh, process with the palms. So please join us back here as you'd like. Excuse me. All right. And as we um, do the procession and all that, you, we will pass out some of the palms. If you like the long palm um, branches, you can do that, or we have them uh, created into crosses here as well. How are you girls? Good to see you. All right. All righty. Again, we'll begin now on page uh, two of your bulletin or the inside cover. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord, God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Reading from the prophet Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughters of Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Bless these branches and let them be for us signs of his victory that grant and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And now I'll invite everyone to go ahead and uh, grab some palms here if you'd like. We'll pass those out a little bit too. Do you want to take some of those and pass them on? There you are. And then, yeah, we can grab a handful of these and pass them out, too. You want to, do you mind taking a bunch of those and letting people grab them if they'd like a cross? All right. You can send some back this way, too. sure everyone could grab some. Do you mind passing those on if people would like those instead? All right, and as we process, we'll go around this way and then again in through here. And um, you, if you haven't had a palm yet, you can swing by and grab one, of course. And uh, we'll be uh, saying uh, our psalm, Psalm 118, that's on the green sheet. Let us now go and go forth in peace. In the name of Christ, all right, amen, yes. And together we say, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. 
Let us now proclaim his mercy endures forever. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, Lord, Hosanna. Lord, send us now success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord. He has shined upon us from a procession with branches upon the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, Lord, Hosanna. Lord, send us now success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord. He has shined upon us from a procession with branches upon the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us an example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. 
Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 31. It can be found on page 5 in your bulletin, verses 9 through 6. We will read this responsively. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of mind. My mind is For I have heard the whisperings of the crowd. Fear is all around. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant. The second reading for today is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. <clears throat> Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able for the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it, just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked him, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. 
Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. From our collect this morning, mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in Christ's resurrection. In the name of our loving, liberating, and life-giving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well, welcome to Palm Sunday 2022. Palm Sunday is always a very strange service, a wonderful service, but it's always kind of odd because we come in and we, we celebrate, we have our procession, whether we're saying a, a psalm and processing in with our palms or whether we're singing all, laud, all glory, laud, and honor and walking around the, the church. We come in celebrating. We come in knowing that this triumphal entry into Jerusalem is a mark of this new king, the king of all kings. But we'll walk out of here very differently, won't we? Some of you might be saying, what happened to the passion? Usually that's read right about now. But we're going to read that at the end of the service, and we're going to leave in silence. That's the diversity of this service. That's the joy and sometimes the pain of this service. That's what we walk into in this holy week. We start it here with Palm Sunday and we get a brief look into what it really is like. But are we ready to walk through this holy week in a new way? Are we ready to to experience this passion, experience this resurrection, experience this trial and the betrayal all in a new way this year? Today we hold these palms, and I love the fact that um, we have our palms. Just, just feel them if you have one in your hand. Hopefully everybody has it. Just feel this one happens to be very, very soft and, um, and smooth. Others might be a little rougher, depending on what you got. Here in just a little bit, we will hear the passion. And I would invite you to, to both feel the palm, but also just to enter into that moment, enter into that story in a new way, using all of our senses. In fact, you might smell the palms, nice and fresh, kind of like outside. Um, I, I, when I think of a Palm Sunday, I kind of think of a day like we had today, just fresh, new rain maybe, not, not as dusty as it usually is coming into Jerusalem, just an amazing day. In fact, right before I woke up or as I was waking up, the birds were starting to chirp. And I could just, in my mind, I imagine all of these things happening. Birds in the olive trees singing. Again, if the people weren't uh, shouting out, Hosanna, Hosanna, the rocks would shout out. It was that kind of a morning. We've all experienced that, haven't we? We're in Colorado. We get all kinds of mornings like that, that are just fresh and new, exciting. That smell of new rain, 
both on the high plains as well as in the mountains. Use your senses. What would that have looked like? What would it have smelt like? What did that road feel like under your feet wearing sandals? What is it like to, to take off your cloak and put it down in front of Jesus? In praise and thanksgiving. In Luke's gospel, they put down their cloaks. In other gospels, they put out the palms. Think about the joy of that moment. You've been hearing about Jesus. You've been following Jesus. And now it's his triumphal entry. You got the world in front of you. What does that look like? What does that feel like? Can you hear the birds singing along with everyone else singing Hosanna? Hosanna? Hold on to that. Because here, after we receive communion, I also invite you to enter into the same way. You'll have the script in front of you, but if you're not one of the readers, and just so you know, they're going to go in the back so we can get mics, or they can be by mics and be heard on Zoom as well. But if you're not a reader, I invite you to, to set the script aside and just listen. When you hear the words, crucify him, Shout out as well, because that's what the crowd did. But I invite you to set down the, the text and just enter into this time of the passion, because that's what this is about. It's not just us reading something of old. It's about walking with Jesus all the way to the cross. What does it look like? What does it feel like? What does it smell like? What would it feel like to be and hear the cock crow as Jesus is denied three times? What does it look like and smell like as Jesus carries that cross all the way up to his point, all the way up to the point of the, of the mountain where he'll be crucified? What is it like to be with Jesus in the garden. Can we stay awake? The disciples had heavy eyes. They weren't able to stay awake. What would that feel like? Oh, wait, I was going to stay awake. I need to be here with my Savior. Oh, I fell asleep again. I invite you during this time to, to experience not just Palm Sunday, not just the triumphal entry, but walk with Jesus and see the love that is being shared. And it's hard, isn't it? Because we don't want to see it. We don't want to experience it. We don't want to really live it. We just like to read about it and say, yeah, that was really nice, and let's jump to Easter. Let's get to that resurrection. But that's what this week is about. So here today, I invite you to walk with Jesus in that time. But I also invite you to walk with Jesus and this community through the next week. Come and hear about the Eucharist being shared on Thursday. Walk the stations of the cross out of Sedalia with St. Philip's in the field and us as we walk through their cemetery as we hear those words once again. Come to the Good Friday Liturgy and hear it read once again in silence and pay tribute to the cross. Kneel at the cross. Come and walk the labyrinth. And then come and let us celebrate on Easter Day or at the Easter Vigil. But walk through this, whether it's with community or on your own. Don't just jump from today to Easter. It's called Holy Week for a reason. I invite you in. I invite you on that journey to walk with Christ. 
And I invite you to use all of your senses. Enter into that time and see what it would have been like. Think about what it would have been like for you if you were there. Are we ones that would turn away when it got hard and say, I, I'm done with this? What happened to that triumphal time? What happened to our palms? I'll walk away. Many did. When Jesus was on the cross, most of his followers, other than a few women, were gone. What would that have been like? Maybe you're one of those disciples that would have walked away and looked from a far distance, a safe distance. What would it feel like to be that person? Jesus still comes to them in the resurrection. Where are you going to be in this story and in this week? I invite you to enter into it with all of your senses. Explore, use your imagination, but walk with Christ in these times. There will be time to celebrate, and we'll do that big next week. But for this week, may we walk with Christ on that journey. May we be with Christ, and may we hear Christ reaching out to us. Can we feel his love, the love of those arms on the hard wood of the cross? That's the love. That's the love of, to the world of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let us stand and affirm our faith with the Nicene Creed found on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer or page 7 of your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Good morning. The prayers of the people, Form 3, can be found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 387 or in your bulletin on page 8. You may stand, sit, or kneel however you are comfortable. 
Father, Mother, Creator of all, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we may all be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Bishop Kim, for all bishops, priests, deacons, and lay ministers. Faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Today we lift up all those we know and love but see no longer. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our needs and those of others. <clears throat> Today, Lord, we pray for all those in our parish family who are sick, those who care for them, and those who are in need of God's strength and guidance. Mary Lou and Hal, Judy H., Kyle H., John, Bob Y., Kim B., Helen B., Deacon Maria, Cynthia, Garrett and family. James, Krista and Warren W., John and Barbara, Ruben Tesso and family, Linda H., Rita, Jen, Stephen Marcia, David and Jessica, Michael C., Kendra S., Joe, Pat E, Rebecca, Joman and Kim, Carrie, Judy, Debbie, Stephanie, Brent, Dawn and Linda, Sally C, Bob, Marianne, the unborn, our military families, law enforcement and first responders, our homebound parishioners and those in nursing facilities. Today we pray for all those affected by the coronavirus and its variant and the healthcare workers who care for them and all who are sick. We pray for moisture in this time of drought in Colorado and the West. Together, let us pray for the people of Ukraine. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment, and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus the Prince of Peace. 
Amen. We celebrate with those who have birthdays this week. Mary Lou Powell and Esther Long, as well as those who have anniversaries. Park and John Covarrubias. Holy and gracious God, we do lift these and all the prayers of our hearts up to you, knowing that you are constantly doing more than we could ever ask or imagine. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace, everyone, both here in the sanctuary and on Zoom. God's peace. Please be seated. Well, it is uh, great to see everyone uh, uh, this, this morning. Uh, we do welcome our visitors and our newcomers. Invite you to sign the guest book if you're here in the sanctuary. If you're a visitor or newcomer on Zoom, you can uh, put your information in on the chat as well. So welcome to everybody. A few um, items of life in the parish as we enter into Holy Week this week. Uh, the schedule is in your bulletin. We invite you to all the different uh, services that we have. We also, after the 1030 service, we'll be moving the chairs out and we'll have our labyrinth. We have a cloth labyrinth that we place down here during Holy Week. We invite you to come and walk that whenever you would like. We'll have the doors open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. If you need them open at a different time, uh, let us know and we can uh, work something out and make sure that you can get in and have the opportunity to walk the labyrinth. If you've never walked it, it's an, it's an amazing path. It's not a maze. There's only one way in and one way out, unless you cross a line, and then sometimes you find yourself back in the middle, like I did uh, one year. And my wife laughed and said, God wasn't done with you, was he? <laughs> so, but again, oh, and we'll have little sheets, if you've never walked it before, that explain some ways to walk it. But again, it's just basically a meditative walk um, to be closer with God. So we invite you to do that during this uh, holy week. So that'll be laid out here. Um, also, uh, for Easter, we'll have a great celebration. We'll have 8 o'clock service and then 11 o'clock. We're moving our 1030 service back to 11. We'll have a brunch in between. At 10 o'clock, we'll have the Easter egg hunt and everything else. So come join us for that. We also have baptisms on Easter Day, so it's going to be a great celebration. So we invite you to come and celebrate with us. Um, there, oh, at the brunch, there's uh, some details in there. We'd like you to go uh, bring something to share. We'll have ham and all that uh, here, but you can bring stuff to share and all, so that would be wonderful as well. 
Um, we do do our Stations of the Cross over at St. Philip in the Field in Sedalia. So um, join us over there on Friday at noon. That is a great experience as well. Also, a, a few thank yous. Um, maybe when you walked in, you're like, man, this is a trashy church. There's all kinds of trash bags over there. Um, we had our work day yesterday and filled our dumpster and plus. So thank you to everyone. We had a, an amazing turnout and everything. And then we got a little fresh rain on the clean, uh, clean ground. So thank you all who showed up and helped for that. Thank you for those who uh, folded uh, palm crosses yesterday as well. And if you haven't noticed, when you leave, go by 4th Street and Cantrell. We got a brand new sign up there just in time for Easter. We were hoping it would be in. And uh, so again, just another way to reach out to our neighbors and let them know uh, we are here. So uh, please check that out. Uh, hard work of many to get that designed. And it kind of finished off our uh, landscaping project there in front as well. So thank you everyone for that. Again, welcome everybody. And we do invite you to walk with us during this Holy Week. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Please stand as you are able. Thank you, sir. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy known have we given thee. Thank you, Lord. And now we continue with Eucharistic Prayer A found on page 361 of the Book of Common Prayer, or page 11 of your bulletin. The Lord be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he may draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, 
who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are we who come in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And that the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
And now we continue with the post-communion prayer, found on page 365 of the Book of Common Prayer, or on page 16 of your bulletin. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bow our heads before the Lord. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. At this time, I invite you to uh, be seated, and we'll enter into this uh, story of the Passion. And the readers, you may go back there to the choirs. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them, about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will be done, but yours. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else, on seeing him, said, You also are one of them. Man, I am not. Then, about an hour later, still, another kept insisting. Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. Man, I do not know what you are talking about. 
And at that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophesy, who is it that struck you? They kept heaping many other insults on him. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together, and they brought him to their council. They said, If you are the Messiah, tell us. If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. Are you then the Son of God? You say that I am. What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee where he began, even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been waiting to see him for a long time because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priest and the scribe stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod, with his soldiers, treated him with contempt and mocked him, and then put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who is perverting the people. And here I have examined him in your presence, and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted together, Away with this fellow. Release Barabbas for us. This was the man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify, crucify him. A third time he said to them, Why, what evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country. 
And they lay, laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and waiting for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing, and the people stood by, watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation, and we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. And Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for the, the spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance, watching these things. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature, and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. <coughs> Amen.
Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.